everyone. My name is Svensky, and I am here today to, for the first time ever, tr attempt to do a little bit of uh, video gaming with commentary. Uh, I've never done this before, but uh, it doesn't seem like too big of a challenge for myself. So the game I would like to show you is called Star Conflict. Um, I picked it up. It's free to play. I saw a couple other videos on it um, on YouTube and it immediately drew my attention because I loved X3 Terran Conflict. I think I played X3 Terran Conflict a good solid 800 hours. It was an extremely enjoyable experience for me. I think it was one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. And uh, this game, just the interface, the the feel, the, the, the game mechanics looked similar in the other videos I've seen. Um, and it turns out they are. The flight mechanics are very similar. It is a free space, arena style, um, PVP and PVE, um, action shooter game. You fly around in third person um, in, a in a spaceship and, and blast away at other people or other, you know, and, and there's objective based arenas. Mostly objective based arenas is what you're going to end up doing. I haven't, I don't think there's a deathmatch mode as far as I can tell. It's mostly like, um, like three, holding three beacons or something like that where you hold a beacon and you, your tickets are counting down if you don't have any beacons or whatever, you know, kind of like a battlefield style there. And there's other modes where it's like there's two team captains. And if you kill the other player, the other team's captain, then the other players won't respawn anymore. Um, so there's there's a other couple other game modes as well. But not to get too into that yet, uh, I just wanted to kind of describe why, why I got the game and... Uh, that's really it. Just because it's it appeals the genre appeals to me. S sort of a space simulation. It's not really a simulator. It's more like an arcade game. I would say it's listed as an MMO because there's a lobby where you can globally chat with everyone. But really, it's not like an MMO. It's not like <clears throat> it's not like WoW or anything like that. Um, there's a lot of progression with with. Um, you know, unlocking stuff, you unlock higher tiers of ships and weapons and other systems. So it, in that aspect, it's sort of like an MMO, but it's really just more of a grind factor to unlock higher tiers of equipment and move up the ranks, so to speak. But it's really interesting because the game, you get right into the game in tier one combat without unlocking anything. You just get your first set of ships and you just poof, you're right into the game. It feels just like straight up, right? It's straight up. There's no progression required to play straight up arena combat just the way you would at the higher tiers except for your system options are much more limited that's really what i've seen so far so anyway enough babbling on i will uh log in i, I bought it well i downloaded it through steam and they link it to your steam account directly but the pub the developer is work they it seems like it started in a their their own launcher or their own client software where you created accounts on their website but so they some they added it to steam and now there's this steam login thing which seems a little broken sort of at first you if you do end up playing you'll see what i mean but i've already linked my account to their website and all that stuff so so you log in and you enter the ship hangar and uh, as you can see, I only have one ship in my hangar at the moment. There's three ship slots I have available. And I just have this one ship. Oops. Okay, so the interface is pretty great. I like it. Um, you spend all your customization time and all your... All the lobby stuff is all in this view, this hangar view. So you're just kind of looking around. You can look at your ship. Um, you can see your... Your kind of your bank, which is this warehouse here. These are items that I've acquired by playing. Um, you can filter here, different items. These are upgrade kits, so on and so forth. All that stuff. Your quests just kind of pop up. There's no like walking around in in a in like a 
first person mode or third person mode in the lobby at all you just see your ship that's it and the contacts just pop up over here they just pop right up there's there's nothing else to it just your quest just kind of pop right out there um so that's really like it's very simple but at the same time it's kind of elegant because this is all you need this is all you need your ship is here you know if you want to pick so as you, your first time you log in you get to pick a ship or whatever they they launch you straight into a tutorial which I went through and they give you your first ship or whatever you can pick one um, this is the ships there's a lot of ships that's one of the things I like is there's a lot of freaking ships there's like three different kinds of ships major classes there's the interceptors there's the fighters and then there's the um, the frigates three major types of like I don't know if you call them classes or whatever uh, still learning a lot here as you can tell I'm no expert to this game but these are all ships and there's three major ship manufacturers or ship races I guess you would say you can pick a race and you can also unlock a, a ship from any of these it doesn't matter you do have to progress from tier one up so if you want to go to higher tiers it seems like you have to start down at the bottom and work your way forward but I don't see that as a limiting factor really because you get to pretty much all three ship classes pretty quickly like here I, I had to start with the Lynx which is a fighter and then I played probably two or three matches and I was able to unlock the first frigate and after a bunch more f playing I unlocked the the first interceptor class here and as you play you are earning these credits here these are in-game credits earned by playing matches I have 800,000 of those there um, so you play you unlock the credits or you get the credits and then with the credits you purchase more ships so I can look down here I can if I played a couple more matches I could unlock this ship here the Swift MK3 but I'm not gonna do that um, and I should say that Yeah, you can you can buy more higher tier stuff, but it seems like you really want to stick with the lower tier stuff and play the game and get used to it first. I can say I, I only played tier one and tier two stuff so far. Right now I'm playing all tier two, but tier one, I, I got used to the game after maybe three, four games, four or five games maybe, and then I started unlocking stuff for my ship, upgrading my systems, and. I started to be a lot more proficient and enjoy myself and I started dominating I was like poning face right <laughs> you know it got a lot easier as I as I learned more and got more proficient at it with the with my links here I was playing and then I unlocked the Swift the Swift is I'll show you my Swift oh I love this ship I played so many games in this ship not that many but this is my Swift that's a tier one ship it's an interceptor so if I look at it I can click it again or go to the equipment tab here and it shows you the ship and what are the things that are installed on the ship these are all the customizable options except the special module that's just so quick rundown I guess your weapon is here that's customizable your missiles are here also customizable other sort of I think these are all passive elements of your ship go here and then your activatable you have four up to four activatable modules that go down here this ship only has two if I go to this one you'll see it has three and then there's four passive modules so these are all customizable except for this guy that's just that comes with the ship whatever this ability is it comes with the ship um, what else can I say here so I did some customizing you know I upgraded my my main weapon here for tier one they don't give you very many options so if I click this you can see the customization options they give you and uh, there's really not I mean there's four here and I think they're the same four here no, no, a little bit different I guess this is unique can't have two of those so there you can see I could choose maybe using this repair kit which just whatever repairs your interceptors hull by thousand points over one second as opposed to this which repairs my shields whatever you know 
Um, so it took me a while, a couple, quite a few matches to up unlock, you know, this, this blue weapon. That's like a, I don't know if there's MK, that's their little abbreviation. So there's MK1, MK2, MK3, and MK4. Those are the ranks of equipment. And I can do upgrades to MK4 for each of these, as you can see. But I'm not going to do that because I don't play tier 1 anymore. Although I might come back to it because it was fun. But I noticed after going to... This is the interesting thing, man. I tell you, you go to tier 2 and you get all this additional customization. And as people do that, they customize their ships more. They get more proficient at the game. And the game changed. It changed between tier 1 and tier 2. All the scrubs were playing tier 1. So it was really easy. I was a scrub at first. So I lost hard the first few matches I played. But after getting a little more proficient with the control systems. It took me a long time to get my control, my, my um, key bindings down as well to understand the most efficient way of using my keyboard. <laughs> um, I'm also playing with a broken arm right now. I broke my arm snowboarding. That's why I have all this time on my hands because I broke my arm snowboarding like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, two, two and a half weeks ago. Um, and they just took my cast off today and put me in a splint. They did surgery about a week ago, so yeah. There's that, that didn't help when I was learning the game. I had that big cast on, but uh, now it's a little easier with the splint I'm wearing. So, anyway, um, what else can I say here? So yeah, as tier two, as I approached into tier two, the first couple of tier two games were the same as the first couple of tier one games that I played. I had no idea what I was doing. the 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 amount of options you had for your ships went up quite a bit, especially the active the active modules here. Um, people were using active modules that I'd never seen before and ships that I'd never seen before and weapons that I'd never seen before. You'll notice now if I click, like if I go to my tier one ship and click the weapon, I only have two options here. And this one's just a seasonal bonus weapon that they're letting anybody try just because it's the holidays. So that's cool too, they did that. That's, I think that's kind of neat. It's a really neat little weapon, actually. Looks pretty sweet. But then I went to tier two and I, was, I clicked my weapons tab and I noticed, oh man, look at all these weapons I can use now. I can use the pulse laser or a plasma gun or an RF blaster or a shrapnel cannon. There's four weapons I can choose from. Um, so I had no idea what any of them were like and well, how they felt. You know, was like that's crucial. <laughs> so. <laughs> I had to try, I tried these three, I haven't tried the shrapnel cannon yet, but I've seen people using it and I don't like it. It looks like a shotgun, basically. Not my style. So I went with this shorter range plasma gun. Oh, one thing, I just love this interface, it gives you all the stats. It's like, like World of Warcraft quality interface where you can see stats. Um, if I have like bonuses from stuff, it's hidden until I hit the control key. And there's my bonuses, which might come from ship um, bonuses or whatever. To highlight over my ship, it might say, you can see it increases main weapon damage by 10% right there at the toward the bottom of the interface there, the pop-up. And all the other stats for all your stuff is listed. I haven't really dug too much into the stats and the differences between all the different ships. Um, people who play the game a lot learn that stuff through a lot of experience. It takes a lot of time. There's a lot of stats. I think the most important stuff that I've been looking at are the are the uh, the control like the acceleration rates um, and the roll and the pitch speeds because I wanted a ship that was very responsive to mouse look and that's why I ended up playing interceptor because it's very quick and nimble and I can turn around really fast and I can dodge everybody and makes it a lot easier for me maybe it's easy mode maybe I don't know they take a huge hit on survivability you'll notice I've got 7192 survivability and if I look in the ships menu if I look at just the same tier worth of of Raptor 22,000 <laughs> survivability points whatever that means so more shield more hull more resistant to damage but they're also a lot slower and they turn slower so I like that I like the fact that they've got this dramatic difference in the ship performance from the speed the response and then the onboard weaponry, the power you have with the weapons on board and the, and the different... So you can't... That's the other interesting thing is you can't take a weapon from an interceptor and put it into a frigate. They don't let you do that. And you can't take a frigate weapon and put it into an interceptor. They're, they're 
unique weapons for each ship class. Um, you also notice that there's rolls, quote, on each ship class. So this, this interceptor I'm using is a covert ops interceptor. The Blade of Aressa is the name of the ship. Um, the covert, the, the, the class is going to explain what the special module does, which is like the unique ability for that ship. So if I picked my tier one interceptor also is a covert ops interceptor. So it has the same special module. It scales with the rank of the ship. So that's the other thing that I need to say is the, sh the whole progression system is divided into ranks. Rank one through whatever, 15. So I guess I'll try to summarize here um, from what we've gone through so far. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot to say. The game is relatively challenging, I'll say that. Uh, it feels relatively balanced. Um, I see everyone doing well with all their different classes of ships, I can say. Maybe there's some ships that are better than others. That's certainly going to be the case. Um, but the ranking system does pretty well. The matchmaking is set up by ship rank, I believe. So if I want to play um, like ranks one through four, I can remove my tier two ship from my hangar. And if I just leave my tier one ship, other maybe some other tier one ships or low ranking ships in my hangar, it will queue me up for tier one games with other tier one players. Um, so you can play with your friends in tier one if you want, um, or tier two, or whatever you want. Uh, or, you know, I can move that and go put my, my other ship back in there. This guy. And there you go. Now I can queue up for rank six. It always says the rank below the ship uh, class there. It says rank six on this ship. And then my other ship here was rank three, I think. Yeah, rank three. So he'll get queued up for games. I'll end up playing against people in ranks four and five, most likely. I think it's ranks one through five is what you get. If you had a rank one ship, most likely, I think it was ranks one through three is what you got queued against, which is all two super noobs. Um, now when I play this ship, it's people playing like tricked out ships like this in my ranks, ranks one through five, usually. I, I don't see that many super noob players when I play this ship anymore because I've, it's a rank three ship, so. That's the other thing is as you, as you unlock a new ship, you're gonna be at the bottom of the ranking for that ship. Um, and you always end up playing people, it seems, that are above you, no matter what, because this isn't, this just playing this ship, rank six, I expected, okay, I'll probably end up playing a lot of rank five, rank six players. It's not really true. The bracket spans down and up for everyone. So I could end up playing rank nine players. I could be in a game full of rank, uh, maybe maybe rank eight, I don't know. Definitely lots of rank eight players I, I play against when I play this ship. Um, so it's always a challenge because there's always that aspect to it. And then you get to pick on their newbie players too because they'll have you know, rank four players in their lobby as well sometimes. Usually I seem to end up most of the time on the bottom end of the bracket with this ship which is okay for me. I don't mind that much. It still does what it needs to do against the higher rank ships. So you look at the ships in the hangar or in the in the, in the game here and you can see it's I think this is the rank of the ship on top. Rank 4, rank 5, rank 6. Yeah that seems to be what it is. So and as you play a ship, you get what's called synergy with the ship. So the more you play it, the, you can increase the level of the ship, basically. And you have to play a specific, you know, that ship to increase its synergy level, or transfer synergy, which costs you money. So yeah, I, I don't want to get into the whole business model of the game, really. If you want to find out about that, you can look it up. Um, you can play this game completely for free. And it's totally fun. I could totally see somebody playing this game totally for free, which is really cool, I think. You pay the money to level up faster. That's really all you do. I paid for one of the DLC packs on Steam, the pirate pack. Bought it just because this game's freaking sweet. 
and they deserve a little money from me, I think, because I'm going to play it for a while. Um, so this is, this is, I bought this with credits, the gold money here, that's real, real money to get that shit, so. Alright, let's remove this from the slot, and let's, uh, let's check out what the game really looks like, alright? Yeah, so I got my ship here. Oh, yeah, I'll show you one thing, because I just unlocked a, an upgrade. When, when you finish a match, if you win the match, you get to loot these leftovers, the remains of the planet or whatever that you were fighting around. Um, and I got lucky and I looted an upgrade for this active module that I use, which is called the Plasma Arc. It's basically a cone, a cone of cold or whatever from WoW, and it just blasts people in front of you, really close range. Um, so I can upgrade it with earned credits, which I have enough to do that, but I'm not going to. Maybe I'll upgrade one of my other things. And instead, I got this little green icon here. That means I looted an upgrade module for this active module. So I can upgrade and use my upgrade module that I looted. Actually, I'll show you where you can find that. If I go to my warehouse and I look around in my MK2 upgrade kits, I should be able to find it. There it is. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of other upgrade kits in here as well. And some other higher tier or um, MK4 upgrade kits as well which I haven't unlocked yet. I'm planning on using this one eventually because I have that on this ship. The Orion Targeting Complex. It's like a huge weapon boost. 100% extra weapon damage for 5 seconds, so it's ridiculous. It's like, if you need to nuke something, you just turn that on and BOOM! That's what I like about this Interceptor is the Orion Targeting Complex. It's freaking awesome. Okay, so let's upgrade this thing. Upgrade... BOOM! And now does better does more damage and I think it lowered the cooldown I don't know this one I'm working towards no I'm up I'm gonna work towards upgrading my weapon to the blue level mk3 level which you need I should say this last thing before I launch the game I swear contracts so there's there's regular quests that you get from like your faction that you choose at the beginning or faction or race or whatever it is so I picked this federation, I think this is. I don't know. Yes, third federation fleet captain. So these guys are the federation guys. Um, each race or each faction has its pros and cons, as you would expect. And it's all in the ship designs, I think. Different properties of the ships. Um, so anyway, um, within with outside of the faction that you choose, there's like six other uh, I don't know what they're called what are these things these are factions maybe those are races and these are factions I'm not sure so these are factions within each major race and these are the two that I've been ranking up and to you, you need these faction credits in order to upgrade to the MK3 level of weapons and other all the stuff. So if I go back to my ship and I want to upgrade any of these to MK3, you'll notice it requires Armada loyalty vouchers. So that's done by signing these contracts. I would have to sign contracts with the Armada. Right now I'm working on the Vanguard because I want to upgrade my weapon first, but all, all you do is you go in here and you just hit these buttons and and you can read what the quests are. They're basically just kill a bunch of people, defend or capture a beacon, you know, all that normal stuff you would expect in an arena tournament st setting. Not tournament, but yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yes. All the quests are pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Oh, hey, look, I almost finished that. Um, yeah, so... That's all I have to say. Let's freaking click the launch button already. And we have to wait a minute or two anyways. Ah, <sighs> yeah, so... Uh, this is like ranking. This is my stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, there's implants too. Implants are like... This is like your... Like your specialization that... 
has all kinds of generic upgrades for all your stuff. Increases critical damage by 50%. That's that's just one of them. You know. Hull strength. Reduces target locking time by 43% and crit chance by 10%. So you can choose between... You get to pick one in each column here. And there's all different options. I think these are pretty clearly suited for different styles of play. I've been choosing stuff that's really... T really geared towards my style of play which is nice that's the game is really good at letting you customize i think i can't tell how much it matters in tier two yet i can see it i can see you know people playing their frigates are very clearly in a frigate and they have to only do frigate stuff frigates are so slow that i can just fly behind a frigate and stay behind him and he can't do anything about it but usually i've run into frigates now that have these Freaking active modules that just do damage to me no matter what. They have like laser turrets on their back or something that they don't have to control. They're automated. Some of them have like little drones flying around them that'll like laser you down if you're not quick. So they have ways of dealing with interceptors, but they're way more susceptible to just getting slammed by an interceptor. So these frigates flying around. I'll pop my cooldowns and burst them down really fast, and they can't do anything about it. They can't hit me because I'm too quick. So there's a lot of, you know, when you get into it, I think probably the higher the tier you're in, the more organized groups you're going to run into because frigates can't stand by themselves. I think that's what fighters might be the best at is destroying frigates high tier. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing. I shouldn't lie to you. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, you can also customize the look of your ship, which I think is kind of cool. I really want to put this, what is this? There's a, one of these. Phoenix logo. I think that looks pretty sweet. But I haven't wanted to drop the coin on it. The DLC pack I, got, I purchased came with a whole bunch of in-game credits here. And this is... The ship is the only thing I've purchased so far. So yeah, you can, you can pay to increase your ranks, basically. This ship was a purchase-only ship. You can only get it with real game money. Oh, I heard a boom. That means we're going to launch soon. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the standard game mode. All my tier one games were this game mode. It's like the three beacons, you gotta control the beacons, otherwise you lose. Um, you can kinda scope out the situation, what your team is playing. As you can see, everybody else is smart and has three options to choose from. And I'm the only one that's only got my interceptor out because that's all I'm playing right now. And everybody else is kinda picking. You can check out what they're using. Diff all different ships, rank six. Rank four. So here we go. We're take out the enemy, complete our objectives, and get out. I usually like to sit back and wait to see where my teammates are going before I choose where to go. I think I'm gonna hit C. So the controls are really good, really good. Um. And the interface is beautiful. That was an unguided missile, mind you. So this guy's in a fighter, so he can't turn as fast as I can. Which makes it easy for me to get on his tail. Ah, I missed it. Okay, let's finish him with this! Whoa! This guy's smart, he's fighting in range of the beacon. Whoa! Yeah, you gotta watch out for running into stuff. A lot of stuff going on right now. Ah, oh, he turned on his defenses. Oh god, I'm disabled! There's a lot of enemy ships here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to deal with this. It's not doing anything though. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? As you can see, I can't really kill people very fast. And I'm also not dying very fast, which is good because I'm hard to hit. Try to stay moving. What just happened? 
Oh my god. Shield down. Alright, I gotta kill. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Too much going on. Alright, forget it. I'm gonna die, so I'm gonna go out. Oh, get a kill, get a kill. Oh, I didn't get it, but that's okay. You can just tab target and just go on to the next guy. There's an arrow, the white on my interface is pointing to my target. And then I can chase him down. Oh, we captured all three beacons. This is, go oh God, this is going really well. I'm going to fly out, get my bearings here. See what I see. This guy can go. I'll blow my cooldowns on him, at least one. That was solid. We got back up while I was dogfighting over here, so. You'll also notice the spread of my weapon increases as I fire. It turns, goes, my little reticle widens. I also am preventing it. It overheats if I continue to shoot for too long. But we shut down my weapon systems. This guy's good. I noticed the good pilots, they fly around in, like, wide circles and arcs prevent from getting hit especially by low speed projectiles you cannot hit an interceptor with a low speed projectile just, you just can't I think I got him maybe hit him with this now nope. fail cannot finish this guy off oh got him with that Oh, he's using his little... So oh, victory! Ha <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah. That was good. So this is the looting. When you finish a match, you get to loot. It's like, I have a subscription to the game, so I get to loot five of them. Normally, you only get three if you're playing for free. So as I loot these, I'm getting credits from... In-game credits, basically. And that happens for anybody. Anybody can do that. I got these things, but these will just auto vend when I go back, and then this is just the credits I get. That was not too bad, not too bad. Fourth down, I didn't die at all. Only got one medal. Look at these guys. Look at this guy. He did pretty good. You can see what ships they were using. A, fight, a rank three fighter and a rank four interceptor, and he was on top. So you can see, you know, I was using a rank six with maximum synergy and this guy did better than I did. I mean it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can do good if you're a good pilot. That was a lot of interceptor on interceptor combat too. Normally I try to go out and take out some fighters and the frigates because it's really easy to get on their tail and they cannot turn around and focus you down with their main cannons. They have to use special abilities to kill you. It's the only way that you can hit an interceptor with like a fighter or with a frigate okay so we go back to the hangar so here it's gonna mail me all my rewards I completed some of those um, contracts that I signed so I get those credits as well these are my rewards there's my loyalty vouchers I don't know what loyalty vouchers are extra vouchers lots of vouchers that match that was a good match good match for me got lots of good stuff you can see my in-game credits went up. Ooh, I think I have enough to upgrade my weapon. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Let me check some. Okay, let's see. Yep, I do. So I can go to that one. I can upgrade this using my Vanguard loyalty vouchers that I just earned to make it... Uh, MK3 weapon. So I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. Look at that. Look at all that damage. All that extra damage. Boom! Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Oh, I like having a blue there. Oh, yeah. So it's MK3 tier 2. So it's like the third rank of the second tier. So that's like everything. There's, there's tier 1 rank 
there's tier one stuff with four ranks within that mk1 mk2 mk3 mk4 and then there's tier two with mk1 through four tier three mk1 through four and then each thing is also further defined by its rank ships are ranked so your ship has ranks and tiers it's there's like three levels to this system i think it's all used for matchmaking and describing the value of the equipment you're using but you can only put tier two stuff on tier two ships so i can't take my tier two rf blaster and put it on my you know swift all i can choose from here is my tier one stuff even though it's mk3 it's it's tier one i can't put my tier two thing there so yeah so i think that's uh that's about all i'm gonna do for this uh voiceover gameplay thingy uh i don't really i don't know what else is in store maybe i'll do another couple videos of more intense gameplay after i unlock some more stuff i don't know i don't know it's just an experiment at this point really just wanted to try it i've got the equipment for it i've got a nice mic I'm using my uh perception 220 mic which is um it's akg brand and i've got this uh, nice focus right scarlet 2i2 dual input usb interface box uh to gather my voice and uh digitize it for me so that's what i'm using and then i'm using a fully registered version of fraps to record the video so that's all there is to it guys I hope you have a Merry Christmas and uh, don't get up too early to bug your parents for your Christmas presents. Who am I talking to right now? No one's watching this. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas and have a good night.